This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show, which airs live every Tuesday evening from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by Big Papa Smokers. Big Papa is the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue, featuring a comprehensive selection of all American-made grills, spices, sauces, accessories, and everything that you need to make a world-class pit out of a 55-gallon drum. Visit them at BigPapaSmokers.com. And by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices and pits as well. You can visit them at TheBBQGuru.com. And by Cook Shack, a leader in pellet and electric style cookers. Visit them for specials online at CookShack.com or call them at 800-423-0698. And by Suckle Busters. Suckle Busters products are preferred by competition barbecue cooks. Texas-based, 100% made in the USA. Introduced first products to Barbecue Central over seven years ago. You can get in contact with them at SuckleBusters.com. Like them on their Facebook fan page, Suckle Busters, or visit the TexasBBQForum.com. Check them out and see why Suckle Busters means busting with flavor. And by Butcher Barbecue, makers of injections, sauces and rubs find them online at butcherbbq.com and by green mountain grills a leader in the pellet grill market you can find out more about their cookers by visiting greenmountaingrills.com and by cookingpellets.com a maker of high quality pellets for all of your pellet driven cookers you can visit them at cookingpellets.com or you can find them at amazon.com as well this is Jennifer Polymus from Shalote, North Carolina, and this is Barbecue Central. This is Jennifer Polymus from Shalote, North Carolina, and this is Barbecue Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening, and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. Uh, This is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. We are broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you board here on your Tuesday evening. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, more than happy to have you. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com are your two bits of contact information. Should you see fit to get in touch with me tonight? Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQ Central Show. Dot com And here's what's happening. In case you didn't get the newsletter, you can sign up for the newsletter, by the way, by visiting the main website and right off to the uh, kind of right-hand top part of the page is a thing that says subscribe to newsletter, plop your email address in, hit subscribe, boom, you're off and running. And what else do you get on top of that? What do you get? My homemade barbecue sauce recipe on top of all of that. Oh, what? Plus you get the heads up. On who's going to be on the show. Doesn't get any better than that. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now. A guy that you see and hear on the show every so often. Fairly, we call him a semi-recurring guest. Because quite frankly, he's very popular. And I get him in where his time allows. A guy that I love to just talk to. But uh, we can talk barbecue. We can talk uh, home cook with this guy. We can talk cookbooks. We can talk Emmy awards. All that good stuff. A SoCal celebrity to the T, Sam Zion, joining us here on the show. Sam the Cooking Guy. At 9.35, somebody who was early regular on the show a good uh, couple of years ago. Uh, had some downtime in the competition scene, but uh, this past weekend, 
saw him win one of the most revered competitions in barbecue history, let alone the KCBS. He also won it about four years ago, the Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle Grand Champ and pitmaster of Pellet Envy, Rod Gray, joins us again on the show at 9.35, and then we'll move to the second hour. First-timer at 10.14, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have uh, added a guest as well. This is going to be fun. I mean, I know these guys because they're barbecue people. They do the Big Apple Block Party. They do the Memphis and May but what do I hear mo I mean, what do I hear because I'm a, a raging alcoholic? They have the best Bloody Mary mix on the market. We got David Rosen. We got Leslie Scott from Ubon's Barbecue. At 1014, first timers to the show. So very excited to have both of them on the show. It was Leslie just originally. And uh, literally about 10 minutes ago, she's like, hey, David is going to be able to join us as well. And I said, oh, multiple people where I have to connect? Things could go wrong. Uh You get them on the line on your side, I'll punch you both up. We're off and running with a three-way, if you know what I mean. Uh 10.35, somebody that I was supposed to have on last week. Of course, the show didn't happen last week. Get that big stuff out of here. The pitmaster of one of the hottest teams out there in the great state of Texas. Two grand championships in a row. We will recap with him. The pitmaster of canned heat, Kit Polk, first time of the show. So first hour, our grizzled veterans of the Barbecue Central show. Second hour, noobs, first timers, greenhorns. Chicken greasers, whatever whatever you can come up with. That's who we got. Sam Zion, Rod Gray, Leslie Scott, and David Rosen, and Kit Polk. Those are your guest lineups for this evening. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Shout out to Nibble Me This in the chat room. Chris Gove from nibblemethis.com. Chris, did you know that I was in Wooster, Ohio today because that's where I work sometimes and that the central hub of the certified Angus beef propaganda station? Uh-oh. I said that for I said that for Dave Bosk, I swear. I'm a big believer in it. Is right in Wooster, Ohio. What? I had no idea. I drove by the facility today. Of course, I was very busy. By the time I got freed up at 3 p.m., it was raining like it was in the middle of a tropical rainforest. Forget it. So I didn't have time because, quite frankly, I was afraid it was going to melt. It was raining so hard. My car was hydroplaning off of state routes and interstates. It was a very scary and harrowing situation. That's where I was. So how about that? I'm going to try and hook up with them. See if I can't talk them into giving me bags and bags of cash. What do you think? Hey, do me a favor. You're watching and listening to the show right now. If you could make a Facebook post or hop on the tweeter and let everybody know the show's on. A couple of different websites to send them to. The main website for us, of course, thebbqcentralshow.com. If you have a computer or you like the video side of things, that's fine. I've been toying around, by the way, with getting a different shot. I don't like the head-on shot. I want like more of the where you're spying on me, like you're a voyeur, and you get to see a little bit more of the the studio stuff. But I don't have a huge green screen, so I can't really... I mean, I don't want you to see the poured concrete walls. I mean, that's not very professional. But there's got to be something that I can do to maybe have like a side shot coming in. And, you know, I I wanted to get more to, you know, give you your voyeur view, but have the radio feel for me, because that's what I really remember. I really liked to remember the show was radio first. Well, Internet radio first. So do me a favor. If you like the video stuff, send those links outdoorcookingchannel.com slash watch dash now. If you have Roku or some other uh, other other 
similar internet protocol television. Go to that particular app store on that platform and look for Outdoor Cooking Channel. If it's there, download that app for crying out loud, and you'll be able to watch the show live right on your Roku. You don't have to leave the comfort of your show. Uh, what side is better? Just the logo. This would be the best show. Doug, this would be the best show right here. And I would just, like, flash pictures of the guests, but, you know, you would just hear me and not see me. This is my better side. My voice is my better side. I mean, who wants to see this? Oh, my goodness. I heard that, sweet Brown. Don't forget, if you cannot find this show live, if you cannot find the time to watch this show live or listen to this show live, which, again, I have said it many times, I highly suggest that through the course of the rest of this year, if it is at all possible, find the show live once. Listen to it as it happens. I mean, I get it. It's recorded. It's not edited when you hear it on podcast. But, I mean, just imagine hearing the fun and frivolity unfold live. I mean, what's better than live? Nothing. YouTube for video replays, Outdoor Cooking Channel for video replays. The main clearinghouse of all audio and video replays is the Barbecue Central website. So you should never miss anything on this show ever, ever, ever. Never. I want to give a big, I never say this, but I'm going to say it right now. I don't never say it, but I rarely say it. I want to give a big shout out to the pitmaster of Big Papa Smokers and proud sponsor of this show, Sterling Ball, for hooking the shit up for my family. Material-wise, I mean, this shirt, the big West Coast offense shirt, uh, every single member of my family got four of these shirts and four of the uh, baseball-style West Coast offense shirts and four of the uh, the tan-style West Coast offense shirts. I mean, it was absolutely inundating the amount of material we got from Sterling Ball. Plus, we got some Genie special hooch rub we got the new uh rub that uh, uh i forget the name of it right off the top of my head but it's like that spicy rub that big papa smokers is coming out with now i mean this is a, one of the best care package like unsolicited i don't ask ask my sponsors do i ask for stuff the answer is no i don't ask for free stuff it just showed up like now remember rule two of, rule three of the show if it's free it's me you got damn right Folks, are you interested in taking barbecue or smoked foods to the next level? Have you thought about starting a catering business, opening a food truck? Wait, this isn't right. Damn it. It's upstairs on the printer. I apologize. Cook Shack's innovative technology for smoker ovens will change the face of barbecue with the release of the IQ5 digital controller. The IQ5 controller, the newest technology in commercial cooking, smoking, and holding restaurant, food trucks, competition cooks, backyard chefs alike enjoy sleep with the ability to set a smoker, leave, and come back in the morning with a day's worth of smoked foods to enjoy, sell, or otherwise. The IQ5 controller allows you to set three stages of cooking, including smoke, cook, and hold temps, since pellets produce more heat under 180 degrees. All three stages are important. Smoke stage adds that smoke flavor. The cook stage gets the food to the required internal temperature. And the hold stage allows you to keep that meat at a safe temperature for holding without overshooting the doneness. Huh. Where can you go to get products outfitted with the IQ5? I'm glad you asked. How about the website, cookshack.com? How about calling them toll free at 800 423 that's 800-423-0698. Again, the website, cookshack.com. I mean, you can peruse the website, see exactly what they have. And you're going to be very happy with the outcome. And the outcome, of course, is you're going to get a cooker that is consistently tried and true with the pellets, which is great, especially if you're in the food service business. You don't have to worry about real sticks. And the uh, food hassles that come along with real sticks. Pellets are great. Dry, burn well, efficient. You're going to love it. Swear to God. 800-423-0698 or cookshack.com for the IQ5 controller. We're back in just a few seconds with Sam the Cooking Guy right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. This portion of the show being brought to you by Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. 31 cities. 500 grand in cash to be won. Next stop this Saturday. I'm sorry, not this Saturday, but a week from this Saturday, July 11th, in one of my favorite cities in the world, Indianapolis, Indiana. Love that town. Local qualifier that feeds the top six teams into the Madison-Wisconsin Regional Final that'll take place August 8th. To find out more about the Sam's Club Barbecue Series, check results, or to register your team to compete, you can visit kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. Keeping up with the Sam's rigmarole, let's head to the hotline and welcome in one of my favorite guys ever just to talk to. Sam, the cooking guy, is uh, Sam Zion. Sam, how are you, man? There we are. How you doing, man? I am absolutely fabulous. It seems like it's been roughly a year and a half since we've sat down and chatted. I'm going to guess that if you say a year and a half, that's because you have that number exact. Don't say roughly. You know what you're doing. No, I think it's only been like three or four months, right? I don't know. Yeah. It does feel like a year and a half. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. Uh, you look well. I feel pretty good. Uh, you had rain there today, yes? Oof. We've had rain here every day for the last two months. I mean, Ugh. look, for a guy, I have uh, three daughters, as you know, and yes, the uh, oldest, who just turned 14, uh, and who's 5'10", by the way, and the youngest, who is uh, playing on the 10U travel softball. Prior to last weekend, we had gotten a sum total of only four games in during this travel season. Out of how many? Five tournaments. So usually, like on a weekend, we would right. play uh, three pool games, and then Sunday is bracket play where you could probably play another three or four games. So if you're doing really well, you play six, seven games in a weekend. Oh We've only gosh. played four games, for crying out loud. Uh, I will trade your weather in a heartbeat. <laughs> we're, we're going down uh, the beginning of next month. We're going down to only being able to water our lawns twice a week. It's, it's so bad here. It, it is so bad here. It's such a crazy dichotomy of I don't get it. Too much rain here where trees are just falling over in the yard because the lawn is so saturated. And oh, you can't that's exactly right. And you can't water the lawn but once a month. We can't do it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but what are we supposed to do? I mean, honestly, we have no water. Our reservoirs are drained, the lakes are nothing, everything's down to to zero. People are starting to do like, you know, Arizona type stuff and they're, Crazy. they're putting, you know, cactus and and that kind of stuff. People are ripping out their lawns, putting in paver tiles, that kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, that's my kind of. I mean, I'm lazy because I don't want to cut grass, but that's not a bad idea. Well, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I hear that. Sam, hear the that. cooking guy joining us here on the show. The cookingguy.com is one website. The Sam Livecast Dot com is an additional website. Two different things. you got to check them both out and get the full effect of Sam. Uh, but actually, these days, you just do everything at thecookingguy.com. Yeah, that's that's the easiest thing. Yeah, yeah. Cooking Go guy. there. We've consolidated. We've condensed. We've whatever. You've shortened. Whatever. We've made it easy. Sam, do you miss the live cast and the live form at all? You know what? Um, I, I liked the the ebb and flow, the give and take, the you know being able to answer questions. But for me, and I don't know if it's a West Coast thing, the time that we did it, the reality was is that people chose to watch the show on their own. The, the number of people watching live was not very big, and for us, it was it was more money because of the whole live streaming thing, and it was pushing schedules around. And, and finally, we just said, you know, I don't think it's worth it. It seems in this internet age, for at least the stuff that we were doing, people were very happy to consume the show on their time. And so we went to that format. Fair enough. Uh, Sam Zion joining us here on the show. Uh, thoughts of the uh, Confederate flag at all? Uh, considering I'm Canadian... <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. I'd rather see a no. Canadian flag. Hold on, let me yell at my kids. Hey, I'm working here. Working. <laughs> well, whatever we call 
this. Right. Hypothetically. Uh, I'd rather see a Canadian flag hanging over some of the state houses in this country. I realize that's not going to happen. I also realize that there's a lot of people that have a, have a lot of, uh, uh, what's the word? Attachment. Yeah. Uh, ugly history to it. And there's those that have, I guess, look, um, I'm Canadian, so I'm a nicer, gentler, kinder person. And I would say if the majority feels that the flag brings up an ugly part of this country's past, albeit a past, I'm okay with it being removed. I do believe it belongs in museums and places like that. But but if it's, I mean, look, I'm Jewish, so I, I sort of look at it like if if California decided to start flying the Nazi flag, you know, in the in the state government houses, I would have what I think many people have a, a similar feeling about it. And of course, we're on the West Coast, so. It's like a whole nother world out here. You know, we see things differently. The, the tone of politics is different here. And I just want everybody to get along. I, I really do. So did that answer your question or yeah. did it confuse it? That's, I mean, that's what barbecue is all about. Bring everybody together. Let's have a good time. Right. Right. We should, we should, we should be able to agree to disagree, but let's, let's eat barbecue. Maybe. Let's just eat. Let's hang out and eat. Right. And, we all have that, no matter where you come from, where you grew up, how your parents raised you. We all have food in common, right? Maybe we should fly this flag over all of the <laughs> state houses, right there. I would huh? be completely come down on. for that. Of course. Uh, all right, how Sam. Could, how could anybody have a problem? Well, the vegetarians yes. might take issue with that. Well, there's the, you, you, can, you can't be everything to everybody, right? What did I hear the other day? Somebody said, how do you know if one of your friends is vegetarian? How? Doesn't matter. They'll fucking tell you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Sam, we have Fourth of July coming up uh, yes. this weekend. I will be hopefully yes. barring rain at softball tournaments for Fourth of July, of yes. course. But um, I'm always interested, you know, with the guys that are, you know, cooking for a living, coming up with recipes for a living. I mean, I'm sure this is a very busy time for you. Everybody wants a piece of you on come on this show or this TV show or this radio show. Give us some tips. Trip, so like local what's your rest, local TV, that kind yeah, of stuff. Like what's they'll, your, they'll um, what are, what are your hot buttons this year for 4th of July? Uh, look, I guess I, you know, um, I try and, uh, encourage people to get out of the norm. And it doesn't matter what I think the norm is. It matters what their norm is. Um, people have a habit of making the same thing every 4th of July, every Memorial Day, every New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And I always think it's different to throw something in the mix that you haven't done before. Str maybe it's stretching yourself a little bit. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just trying something new. But if it's a hamburger and hot dog holiday for you, then let's bust something else out. And whether that's chicken or cooking a whole salmon on a cedar plank or doing a whole tenderloin or, or, or lamb, and, and part of me feels like, like some of the diehard you know, barbecue people would never consider lamb as an option. But I think that, that, that getting out of that comfortable little spot that you live in every July 4th is a good thing to do. So, for instance, what's your? Do you have a projected menu? Are you going to be at home? Or are you going to be out and about, or what? No, actually, we're we're going to. Uh, we've been invited to a uh, a lovely party that'll be probably a hundred and fifty people. Ugh. They'll cater. Well, cater. They'll have people there making food for everybody. Nobody has to bring a thing other than like a bathing suit and a change of clothes because it'll get cool here by you know seven thirty at night. Yeah. And you all want to watch the fireworks outside. And they live on the ocean, on right on a cliff, and it'd be spectacular and way above my means. But but if I was going to do something here, um, I, I would say you know I, I mentioned lamb. I like to do that. Um, uh, I like chicken. I like the I like Asian influence in things. So five spice powder. And chili sauce or a couple of things that I'm really comfortable using and encourage people to use. I find myself lately saying to people, if, if you live and eat a predominantly Western 
style of food. This and chops and chicken and stuff like that. The addition of a single Asian ingredient can just turn shit on its head in a really wonderful way and nothing too crazy. You know what sambal is? No. A chili sauce. It's a chunky Asian chili sauce. You know sriracha. Yep. Right. So sriracha, sriracha is, is chili sauce too, but it's smooth and doesn't have any seeds. The same people that make it make a little jar about this big. And uh, Jordan, can you look in the fridge and find the sambal, the chili <laughs> sauce, the little, the little clear jar with the green top? No, oh, you heard me. <laughs> sambal. It's a chili sauce, the small clear jar with the green lid. This is your kid, right? You're one of my kids, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't moving know to, exactly what you're talking Colorado, about. Colorado uh, next week. Oh, mile high. Wow. So, like taking chicken, marinating chicken in a little soy mixed with this chili sauce that hopefully he can find in the fridge for, you know, two, three hours. Really amazing, really big, amazing flavors. And I think it's a nice change. A really nice change. Do you five spice powder? Just readily available. Uh, certainly here in California, at almost any supermarket, mixed with some soy and uh, a little brown sugar, and then you marinate chicken in that or fish or something, and then cook that. It's it's a fantastic change. The other thing that I say is do something that you normally wouldn't cook on a grill. And I, I always go to pizza. I think pizza. Yeah. You can do simply really amazingly well uh at like a, like an appetizer you know maybe you don't do chicken wings and then follow it up by brisket or steak or chicken or something like that yes that's it that's it thank you here you go let me close up here there we go do, do you get that yeah oh i got that in my uh in my grocery store right exactly so it's you know we call it it's loosely referred to as sambal but it's chili sauce, and it's just this one ingredient <laughs> in your fridge, stirring it into uh, some soups, in some uh, noodles, in a stir fry, in a wok, and marinating chicken or on top of some fish or something. It's really great. If I had to have only one Asian ingredient, it would probably be this stuff because it goes so far. Same. But so, sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, so, uh... Do you find the different influences from your travels or is it just something that you know you like so you try and incorporate it in? So, you know, I grew up in Vancouver, Canada with a really significant Chinese community. Lots of lots of Japanese, but it's predominantly Chinese there. Like San Diego has, you know, Mexicans. Vancouver has Chinese and it really influences an awful lot of stuff, uh, especially the food. Uh, Condé Nast Traveler magazine a couple Christmases ago said Vancouver, British Columbia had the best Chinese food, not in North America, but in the world, Really, which is a crazy concept. But the, <laughs> their thinking behind it was, you know, when Hong Kong went back to, to China in 1999, a few years before that, everybody freaked out thinking it was going to be a communist takeover and it would be ugly. And a lot of the Chinese in Hong Kong, and many of them came to Vancouver because it already had an established Chinese community. And along with the business people and the teachers and the moms and dads and grandparents came a huge amount of chefs. And Vancouver's Chinese food now is, is ridiculously good. And so I grew up in that environment. This is something that I you know, grew, was accustomed to there and and now, you know, I go through one of these almost every month because I, wow. I put it into so many things. But getting back to the pizza, pizza on a grill, whether you make your own dough or whether you buy dough, which is now readily available in many supermarkets, yep. I take it out of the fridge a half an hour before I want to use it to let the glutens relax. I take a baking sheet, I spread a little olive oil on it, and then I put the dough on that. And then with my fingers, I spread it out. Take it out to the grill on the indirect side, and I lay it down like a, like a sheet on a bed. And whatever shape it lands in, just let it live there. Because if you think you're going to straighten it out or turn it into a perfect circle or rectangle, you're not going to do that. However it lands, leave it, call it rustic, everybody will be fine. 
six minutes on that side, you get the, the grill stripes. It gets crispy. Oil the top, flip it over, and now put anything you want on the top of that pizza that's like crispy. Cheese, pastrami, salami, pulled pork, cheese, anything you want, shut the lid. Give it another five, six minutes, and you've got an amazing pizza. Look, you're already going to be heating the grill for probably all the other stuff you're going to do on July 4th or Memorial Day or whatever big grilling event you've got. Yeah. So why not use it for an appetizer? I think it's the perfect thing to do. One of the other things that I like to do on the 4th of July is drink my face off. Uh, do you Who have doesn't? right? I mean, that's every day, but Fourth of July for sure. Um, do you, Do you have like any favorite cocktail recipes that you're working on right now? Uh, well, Southern California, you know, from my house to the Mexican border is literally thirty minutes, and so we're big mar- we're big tequila people here to start. We love our tequila in any form, pretty much. But margaritas are something that that. You know, I my the margarita recipe on my website, uh, I think is a really, really solid one. I've had I get emails from people all the time. And the thing that makes it good is it's almost not like drinking, and you have to be careful because it will sneak up on you. Yeah. But I also make uh blackberry and mint margaritas. Two or three blackberries in the bottom of a glass and a piece of a couple pieces of mint, and then you muddle the shit out of that. Then you add some ice, then some tequila, then some uh, sweet and sour, splash of Grand Marnier, some fresh lime juice. It's really, really good. But my favorite way is a few uh, rocks in a glass, some good tequila, and a little tiny baby wedge of orange in there. Makes me super happy. And I can sip on that glass for, you know... 10 minutes and then fill it up again. Sip on it another 10 minute, you know. But we do like our tequila here. What's your what's your uh your what will be your July 4th uh poison in a glass? Yeah, I'm working on one right now and um for a while it's been that Moscow Mule. I actually have one, yes. you know, right here. Uh, You're buying good ginger beer, I hope. Yeah, it's a fever tree or beaver tree or whatever they call it. So this is my, okay. I have one right here, as you can see it. You got the proper copper so, mug. Yeah. I see it's got nice and chilled. There. Yeah, it's all good. That makes me happy. You're doing it the right way. That's the right way. So what I've been working on is a, I don't even have like a name for it, but there's this uh, lem- lemon lemon flavored vodka, but it's not. Le- lemon cello? No, no. It's called, okay. uh, the, the maker is uh, Deep Eddy. All right. And it's lemon vodka, but it's not fake. It tastes like somebody squeezed real lemons in it, which no, is No, I can't I generally hate the flavored vodkas the fact they taste fake. Yeah. So, completely realistic to the tune yeah. where you could just dump some over ice and drink it straight. It's that good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then so I take uh 2 ounces of that, uh an ounce of simple syrup and then yes. an ounce of bourbon. Yeah. Look and at then you. Yeah, and then just kind of whirl together, and uh, there you go. And it's and it's by delicious. the way, you say two ounces and one ounce. Yeah, can I trust that you're free pouring? Well, yeah, I mean I count because I used to be a bartender. Okay, but you yeah. know, just for recipe purposes, you know, it's professionals. Yeah. We're, t- we're professionals talking together. Yes, we are professionals. Yeah, so um, that's it's. I mean, it's it's refreshing, and it's like you said with your margaritas. Yes, you know you got to be a little careful. It might be a little hot on the yes. on the tongue a little bit in the beginning, but quickly dissipates, and all of a sudden, oh, you know, I two say, or three if later, it's too, if it's too strong for you, wait wait three minutes. Let the ice <laughs> melt, and it'll be fine. Yeah, you get a little uh, chemistry dilution in there, and you're absolutely all exactly. set. Exactly. All right. Last exactly question right. Uh, before I let you go, because I blew a yes, bunch sir. of time asking you about stuff that I was only interested in. No I apologize for that. Um, of French fries. Yeah. Oh They're God. Very American. I mean, you're Canadian, so you have that whole poutine thing, which they don't have down here, which is crazy. Uh, uh, no, they well out here they do. Yeah, but it's we not have like it, free we have flowing it out here. It's not free flowing like it is in Canada. And for people that don't know, poutine is simply French fries with cheese curds that I know you have. Yeah. And then and then a good beef gravy uh, poured on the top of it. Right. Yikes. So well, it's fantastic. I think it sounds kind of shitty. No, it doesn't. It sounds oh, okay. great. I mean, I, I say it to people and they're like, oh, 
and then they have it, and they they freak out how good it is. Yeah, because it's gravy on potato. I mean, it's fabulous with yeah. cheese curds. It doesn't get any better than that. But, um, but, but French fries are merely a delivery system. Yeah. So what what should you be putting on French fries? Well, of Side course, uh, we, look, the, the, the San Diego County Fair is going on right now, and there's a place there that does a <laughs> really amazing job of French fries with gravy and, uh, sorry, with chili and cheese. That's pretty standard. I mean, that's not too yep. crazy out there. Yep. Pulled pork Oof. that I know the people that listen and watch you are making by the ton. Right. Pulled pork on top of fries is maybe something that you should be doing once a week. You want to add chili to that. You've got some gravy from the process. Uh, do that too. I like to do a, a fried egg on top of French fries. It, you need almost nothing more. It just needs to be seasoned well. Lots of kosher salt and fresh ground pepper. You bust into the over easy egg and that becomes the sauce to it. That's really fantastic. You love over easy eggs. It's like soft boiled eggs. I put it, put it on a shoe and it would be amazing. <laughs> Drive through McDonald's and get extra Mac sauce. Yeah. And pour that on top of your fries. Oof. You you can't go bad. Somebody's going to be cooking some chicken this uh, July 4th. Take some of that grilled chicken, cut it up fine or shred it or do whatever you want. Put that on top of the the uh the the fries. Then melt some butter in a little pot. Dump some Frank's Red Hot into it. Yep. Get that nice and melty and thick and put that on top. There's no bad there. We make carne asada fries here in San Diego because, well, because we can and because you should be able to do that. Right. Crab and lobster with, with some kind of hot sauce or tartar sauce is unbelievable. And I make every so often when I'm feeling decadent and don't care about my waistline, I make Benny fries, which is really like an egg Benedict. Oh. The poached egg on top. Yeah. We've already talked about egg. The other one was an over easy. It's a poached egg and then hollandaise sauce on top of that. Oh. The fries are the base of it like they would be the English muffin. You break into that yolk through the fries. The hollandaise sauce is working its way down through the individual ah. uh, uh, pieces. It's ridiculous. Oh. Let your mind go. Fries are one of those things that you can make on a Sunday night and then clear whatever the hell out is in the fridge. Put it on top and you're fine. Pizza sauce, p spaghetti sauce, even just, you know, like, a, a, like a, some gravy dumped in with a lot of Worcestershire. Mm. It's all good. Delivery system extraordinaire, as you said. That's that's what it is. Uh, if that's you are interested in any of these, uh, please go to Sam's website immediately, thecookingguy.com. You can link over to the live cast as well, which he's still doing. Sam, always appreciate the time. Happy July 4th to you. You're the best. Yours, Thanks, man. man. Have a good time. Don't drink too many of those mules before you finish cooking all your great food. Not me. All right. There he is. We'll right, talk brother. soon. See you. Sam, the cooking guy, joining me a little uh, over there. I apologize to Rod Gray, who's probably uh, waiting for me, but nevertheless... Uh, get the fries out, ladies and gentlemen, because it's big and fat, and here we go, okay? Oh, my Lord. I mean, did you hear what he was talking about? Perhaps something else that would go well on top of fries, butchers, barbecue, sauces, and rubs. You go to butcherbarbecue.com. You buy all of the injections. You buy all of the rubs. You love it. You want to do it. It's a delivery system, for crying out loud. He just said... Today's products have garnered a tremendous amount of attention on the internet through reviews, experts using it, championship pitmasters using them, scoring and winning, all that good stuff. I mean, Dave uses his own stuff and wins, so I mean, that's got to tell you something, right? Not just making it for the general public and then casting it aside when it really comes down to nuts and bolts for his competition. No, no, not him. If you like sauce, good for you. Sweet barbecue sauce is one of my favorites. I just cracked open... A bottle yesterday for pulled pork that I reheated out of the food saver bag. No liquid smoke. Dave took the time and effort to make a quality sauce that didn't take the easy way out like most do with that liquid smoke. Don't worry about breaking the bank when it comes to shipping. All reasonable. Anything over 200 bucks ships for free. So 
My advice is spend the $200 plus, get the free shipping. You can do it. It's easy. It's great. You're going to love it. ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. Stock up now and always trust your butcher. We are back with the pitmaster of Pellet Envy, Rod Gray. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. Thanks again to Sam Zion for joining me. The CookingGuy.com's website. This portion of the Barbecue Central show being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. I own one. If you're looking for a medium-sized one, they got you covered there. How about something to take on those tailgates? Yeah, they got you covered there, too. They can also supply you with pellets to fire those cookers. Check them out at Green Mountain Grills. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. I love mine. You could love yours as well. All right, uh, joining me now, somebody who has not... Won one, nay, won a pair of great Lenexa barbecue battles. And here to recap this past weekend and get into some other items is the pitmaster of Pellet Envy, Rod Gray, joining me here on the show. Rod, how are you, buddy? I'm great. How are you, Greg? Absolutely fabulous, Rod. It's been a minute. It's been a little while. The, the show's kind of gone to the dog you're talking about. Blackberry mint drinks and oh, this is uh, this is uh, we're broadening our palatable horizons. Well, I'm here to rein it back in. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, Rod, hit the camera button on your Skype thing so we can see you. Why? You don't need to see me. I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. There really? I am. How do you do that? What are you talking about? <clears throat> hey, there you are. Look at this guy. See, really? you know, you know what you're doing. Aren't you? Aren't you a computer guy? <laughs> No, I'm not. I wouldn't have wore stripes if I thought you wanted to see me on, on the camera. Yeah, this is what we do here. We want to see the stars when they come out and play. Here we are. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Rod, um, not one, but two great Lenexa barbecue battle titles to Pellet Envy's credit. And maybe, I don't want to overstate, but maybe for the folks that are really into it and really like the, the KCBS contests and ones that you want to win, certainly we know uh, American Royal and the Jack Daniels and, you know, the list kind of goes on. But uh, perhaps one that might get under the radar of the general fan, but the one that a lot of people want to win that are really in it is the great Lenexa Barbecue. I mean, 185 freaking teams there last weekend. Yep. Um, so that, that contest is 34 years old. The American Royals 36 years old. So it's one of the oldest contests in the country. It's um, also, I think, the third largest KCBS sanctioned event in the country. So it's a big deal. Lenexa, the reason that it goes under the radar is Lenexa does it to promote tourism in Lenexa. So they're not looking to promote it nationwide as much as they are trying to bring people to Lenexa. And honestly, I didn't even know this till this year, but it's a break-even event. Their goal oh. is not to make any money. It benefits nothing. It's just to break even. So they're careful with the way they spend their money and how they budget. And they want to keep it reasonable for teams and for people to come in. They get like 20,000 people partying there on Friday night. It's pretty crazy. It's like just the American Royal Dark Side. That's what it's like. Is Can you set any kind of a of a scene that it takes place in? Is it majestic? Is it? Something that, you know, run of the mill. I mean, what's it like? Well, um, it's Lenexa is a suburb of Kansas City on the Kansas side. It's a really nice one. Um, and within this urban setting is this really nice kind of a rolling hills park with a lake in the middle of it. And they line teams up around this lake and into this, this, this park. It used to be, Greg, there were over 200 teams. And we only were allowed to have spaces of 18 by 18. So they knocked the teams down, about 30 teams, I think. And, and relayed out the park, and so now we're all in 20 by 30 spaces, which is more of a modern era size space. And this is an old-time contest, and all the old-time hardcore barbecuers, this is the one they want to win. Rod Gray joining me here on the show, the pitmaster of Pellet Envy, uh, winner of this past weekend's Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle. So 
How many competitions do you have under your belt prior to going in this past weekend, Rod? Uh, I think I'm around 10. I don't really know. Eight or 10. Right. I mean, Something like that. So, I mean, the lame question is to say, you know, did you have enough where you felt like you were prepared to go in and hammer down here? But, I mean, you've been doing it for so long and you've had, you know, a good amount of success, especially in years past, uh, where I imagine once you get a program going that's successful, it's something you can just kind of, you know, repeat over and over and over again because that's kind of what makes you successful. But how did you feel going into this past weekend? I was fine. No, that's not an issue at all. It, it kind of comes now. Um, I think you said it best. I, I may not be one of the currently one of the best cooks in the country, but I'm definitely one of the most consistent. So I just run my same program. And, you know, in addition to the contests we've done this year, we've done three classes already. So, you know, I probably have a dozen cooks under my belt. And uh, it's just it's just, you know, picking them up, putting them down. And, uh, and get it in the box. From a, from a high level standpoint, last weekend, I mean, was there anything out of the ordinary that you had to put up with, contend with, and and how did you feel about your turnins? So the next was pretty unique in that my space is probably one of the few that doesn't have a party in it. Um, in fact, my space is pretty dark on Friday night, and everybody else has a party going on. So we contend with something. I have a story from the next. Uh, from every year. Um, we missed it last year, but the year before a guy wanted into my space about 4 AM and he thought the back end of my smoker might have been a porta potty and I had to stop him. <laughs> and then the funny thing about it was the next morning I'm tending my fire and I hear this voice from, from the space next door say, uh, I thought I was pretty good last night and I spin around and it's that guy. Oh. And I don't know him from Adam, but I have to interrupt his conversation and say, you know, actually, you weren't very good last night. So <laughs> I have a story like that, and I've toned that down, of course. But I have a story like that from every single year I've put there. Rod, it's pretty out of hand. You know who that was, and I'm going to reveal it. It was Doug Castens from Smoker's Purgatory. We all know it. <laughs> Come clean. I'm just kidding. I love Doug. Uh, former uh, former winner of uh, the Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle, by the way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's... It's a great story. It's a, it's a great event. Um, you felt pretty good about everything. Um, oh, you did ask me about my turn in. Yeah. You know what? These days, Greg, we don't try to second guess ourselves. We put our best meat in the box, turn it in, and we don't try to say, was that a winner or not a winner? You know, Sherry will comment as to whether it was good that day or not good that day, but it's just in general terms. Is she, if, correct me if I'm uh, misremembering, but is she a, a taster? She's the taster. She right? is. Sherry tastes everything that goes in the box. Um, on an average day when Sherry's there, the only thing I taste is brisket. Will you make any last-second seasoning adjustments before you you run it up, or you just taste it and go, yeah, it's good, or no, it's not? Oh, no, no, no. I think I personally believe, and this isn't my concept, really the first person I heard talk about this is Jeff Staney from Slaughterhouse-Five and now from Joe's Kansas City, um, owner of the Kansas City Barbecue Store, my sponsor, slide that in there really nicely. Um, Jeff said... The difference between a good cook and a great cook is their, is their ability to make adjustments right before you close the lid on the box. And so we're always considering adjustments, whether it's reseasoning or, you know, if we've got too much salt, we need some sweet. Or if we've got too much sweet, we need some savory. We're always considering adjustments before we close the lid on the box. When you hear your name called as overall champ uh, out of 185 teams, I mean, obviously there's probably a little bit of a crapshoot mentality, but... Uh, what is the second time winning Great Lenexa mean to you guys? That's you know what it's an amazing question that not only had I not considered, but I hadn't really considered how I felt at that moment. We um, we didn't get a chicken call. We were second in ribs. We were sixth in pork and sixth in brisket. And there may have been one other team with three calls, and they worked their way up from ten. And when they we had to. Like three, I begin to think, well, wow, we really tanked chicken, because I don't, I don't think, I don't think many people ever really say, I'm about to win this contest, <laughs> and and uh, we got all the way up to to RGC, and I'm like, damn, they hated my chicken, and then they call <laughs> us out, and for a split second, I think the feeling I had was relief that my chicken wasn't that bad, <laughs> and then my, I think I turned my thoughts to, wow, we just won this contest for the second time, and that, and that has, I, it's probably been done, and I'm not sure by who, but it's pretty rare. It's amazing for as long as I've done the show, and maybe it's going on eight or nine years now, and I always ask pitmasters that get called three times 
but there's one that just kind of hangs out. And <laughs> nobody ever goes, yeah, man, it, w- it had to have been 11th, so I was good with it. They're always like, oh, I just tanked it, and it'll probably, you know, I'm going to finish 10th. It just never fails that the uh, pitmaster humbleness is uh, always at an all-time high for some reason. Well, you when you when you've been at it as long as we have, this is our fifteenth year. You see things that make you and, and things happen to you that make you feel that way. I have a great example of a two hundred plus team contest here in Kansas City. It was called the Great Great American. It was the Open, and there was a great team. Um, they're still around cooking. It's Donna Sharon Willis, Smokers Wild. They had three strong calls out of two hundred teams, and they go to call overall. And there's twenty. They're calling twenty overall. <laughs> And they get up to about number four, and Johnny Trigg walks over to Donna Sheeran and starts to do the, the we're not worthy, we're not worthy thing, and they don't win the contest. Oh. They, they finish somewhere below 20th. Wow. What a horrible, horrible feeling that. For, for me, not for Donna Sheeran, yeah. but for me. And, and so I think those are the stories that bring you down and make you humble about it. Uh, Rod, where are you guys going to be competing at next? Um, so we're going to take this weekend off, uh, and then I think we're going to go up to Nebraska oh. and do a little cooking up there <clears throat> next weekend. Is that a place you've gone to in the past? It's not. Um, I haven't been to Nebraska in a long time. Sherry says I don't cook well in Oklahoma or Nebraska, but I'm going to I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and see if we can't solve that. All right, we'll, we'll see how that goes for you here in uh, two weeks' time. Uh, some other hot button items here, and, and I apologize, we're on the short side of a segment here, but. Um, there's this TV show out there called Barbecue Pit Masters, and you know I there wonder, is? yeah, and I, and I wonder I've lost interest in it. And you could tell if you if you review the shows, you know I really haven't been having a lot of people on. I've had Junior Urias on a couple of weeks ago when he won his uh, you know qualifier event to get in the finals. But I, what's your take on the show right now? And and is you know is that something that you are actively trying to get into, or do they reach out to you about that? Like, what's Pit Masters mean to to you and Pellet Envy right now? Well, so this year's season, they're calling a champion series and saying they're having all their champions back, but I am not on this season of the show. Odd. So I don't know uh, what happened there. They, they didn't want me back. Um, that's all I know. I don't know why. Um, maybe they didn't want me to take any more of their money. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, a lot of good friends on that show. Uh, I, I haven't seen this season at all. I know it's under a new production company. Yep. Um, I know I know all about it. You know, Everybody keeps track of it, So, but... But uh, I'm kind of on the outside looking in for Pitmasters this year. Are you watching it with any type of enthusiasm, or is it a little bit of a sour grape? I'm not watching it this year. All right. Well, that makes two of us, me and you. Um, yeah. In regards to business of barbecue, certainly, you know, you get out there and compete. But, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, you've gotten into the business side of it with the sauces and the rubs and so forth. Uh, how is the Eat Barbecue products line meeting or exceeding or coming under expectation for you guys? Well, I'll tell you, it's um, it's definitely exceeding my expectations. I put I put some products out more as a calling card for me being full time in barbecue, and uh, not, but I did work hard to make sure there were things that were good and things I actually used. I use all four of those products in competition every weekend. But, I, but I'm going to tie this into the Pitmaster segment. A guy saw me saw us on Pitmasters, happened to see our products somewhere, brought them in, tried them, realized they were the sauces were all natural, and then. Through, through that connection, we are now in over 1,600 Kroger stores and Kroger-owned stores all across oh, wow. the country. Huge. Now, they're not on the shelf of the barbecue section. I get this question a lot. They're over in the all-natural section. They're oh. over by the produce. Seek them out. They're all there. Both sauces, both rubs, all over the country now. And I'm very, very excited about it. Are you surprised that they're not with all the other stuff? Or just because of how they're made, you're okay with where they're positioning them in the stores? Well... So the sauces have always been all natural. So they're just great sauces. That a byproduct of that is being all natural. I knew where they were going. I knew what the deal was. It was Tr- Kroger wasn't going to take me in. I'm, I'm a fledgling company, so yeah. Kroger wasn't going to take me in and put me in their sauce aisle. I'm just not that big. But we found a little way to get in the door, and and it's great to have that kind of distribution all over the country. I mean, who wouldn't want that? It's it's amazing. Yeah, sixteen hundred stores uh, plus. That's certainly a. Uh, are there yeah. any other products from Eat Barbecue that are in the test kitchens right now? Or are you good with what you get? I'm pretty good with what I have. I have a lot of things swirling in my head. Maybe a hot sauce, uh, maybe a chicken rub, a couple of things there I'd like to work on. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna concentrate on doing these four and doing them right, and then we'll branch out eventually. You'd mentioned that the Kansas City Barbecue Store is a sponsor of Pellet Envy, and mm-hmm. one of the other ones that I wanted to ask you about, uh, Yeti. 
And I'm hearing, yeah. you know, the sponsor of yours, and I'm seeing that they're really kind of jumping in headlong into competition barbecue to a certain degree. And uh, I guess as a, a guy who owns some coolers, I get sticker shock. I look at a cooler and it says 400 bucks, and I want to shit my pants if I'm going to be honest. So from a sponsor standpoint and to, you know, to kind of sell me on it, like why is Yeti cooler that good to command such a price point? Grease lighting will clean your shorts for you, Greg, by the way. Just put it on my sponsor. And hey you know, stuff. There you go. Um, <laughs> so, so I answered the call last year. Yeti was interested in talking with me. Um, you notice that they're kind of converging on barbecue. I think they feel like they've, they've done quite well in the fishing industry and in the hunting industry. And logically, they're looking at other people that use coolers and, and we're that group. Plus, we're kind of colorful and, and, and they're out of Texas and, and Texas is about barbecue. Um, here's, so I, so there are what, probably seven or eight of those, of the high end cooler brands out there. Um, so when they didn't just say yes, because I, I didn't just want to jump on board just because it was somebody knocking on my door. Yep. Um, I wanted to look at them. So I went on their website and here's what I found. If you look at the accessories available for the Yeti coolers, it's like nobody else in the industry from sliding feet, from drain plugs, you can attach a hose to from tie down systems and all kinds of different things. And what it told me was this was a company who had thought a lot about their coolers and how people will use them, but they put a lot of dollars in marketing. They're like the Cadillac of, of barbecue coolers, of, of, of coolers. And uh, I love their construction. I love that they're made from a, a whitewater kayak material and they're really rigid and hard and you don't sand off the bottom of the cooler if you drag it across the, the asphalt like some of their competitors. Um, and I love the way they hold ice. It's, it's that simple. For me, you're, you may not use the cooler the way I do, but, you know, we used to make a trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, every late June. I think I it last weekend, in fact. And I would, have to, I would have to buy 7 or 14 pounds of ice at about every, every three hours on my stop to keep all this stuff iced down for doing contests for two days. I don't, I don't have to do any of that with Yeti. So over the course of a long weekend like that, I might save 50 bucks in ice. So over the course of a season, I'll probably pay for a cooler. So three years investment in those coolers, and all of a sudden you're, you've, you've paid for them because of the ice you save on them. Rod Gray joining me here on the show, the pit master of Pellet Envy. They won the Great Lenex Barbecue Battle this past weekend. Uh, he's going to be competing in Nebraska here in a couple weeks. Uh, Rod, anything else before I let you go this evening? No, I think we've covered it. I really appreciate you having me back. It's been a while. Um, and you do great stuff for barbecue and, and I'm happy to be on your show again. Rod, can you believe I, I might have made a grassroots movement to get my name on the barbecue hall of fame ballot for 2015 under the celebrity category. Can you believe, you know, wait, well, hold on. Can you believe that son of a bitch, Steven Reichland got in ahead of me? What? There is corruption afoot. You know that I served on that committee for years, so I'm just going to leave that lay there. Fair enough. Uh, Rod Gray, the pitmaster of Pellet Envy. It is always my pleasure, Rod, and we'll talk to you again soon. Greg, thanks for having me. You got it. There he is, Rod Gray, Pellet Envy. He's not touching it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Steven, if you're listening on a replay, of course, you know I'm kidding, right? I love you. I love Stephen. I've been clamoring for his... I don't need to apologize. Thanks again to Rod Gray. Let me talk to you folks about Suckle Busters, award-winning barbecue rubs, barbecue sauces, chili kits, and Texas gunpowder. Wow. Preferred by competition barbecue cooks. Texas-based, 100%, made in the USA. Products have won hundreds of industry awards, including two first places at the American Royal Barbecue Sauce. How about a new product from Suckle Busters, the Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce? It's based on the Suckle Busters award-winning Honey Barbecue Sauce. This is a thin barbecue glaze and finishing sauce made especially for a competition rib and chicken. Super sweet, not spicy. It's super red because they use a special American paprika for a bright red color. Here's what you do. You brush it on the last 5 to 10 minutes of cooking. It'll leave a nice glossy red sheen on the meat. And most importantly, add an extra layer of sweet flavor. Take your competition ribs and chicken to a whole nother level. 
Available at local barbecue stores or online at sucklebusters.com. That's S-U-C-K-L-E Busters, B-U-S-T-E-R-S, sucklebusters.com. You can call 972-393-9509. You can email them sales at sucklebusters.com. You can get your free bottle of award-winning Sucklebusters Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce by emailing me right now and in the comp- and in the subject line. Use the word Peterbilt. Use the word Peterbilt. Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Keyword Peterbilt. In the subject line, you can get a bottle of Sucklebusters Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce. Thanks to Dan Arnold and the folks over there at Suckle Busters. Uh, we're back to wrap up the show very quickly. Stick around. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. We are back. Thanks again to Rod Gray for joining me. PelletEnvy.com. The Kansas City Barbecue Store, spo- uh, Kansas City Barbecue Store sponsors him. Yeti Cooler sponsors him. Greased Lightning sponsors him. Check them out if you're so inclined. Uh, John Dawson weighing in. Greg, I have a suggestion for the name of the cocktail recipe you just gave. Golden State Lemonade. No! You son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. All right, we're going to wrap the first hour here. We'll join for the second hour in just a few minutes. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. This is Chris Payne from Euclid, Ohio, and you are listening to Barbecue Central. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? We ate fifty four wiener. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working right now. Ooh. Top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Hey, yo! You are listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. It is the Barbecue No, it is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. Uh, We broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It's the barbecue capital of the North Coast. Didn't you know? Of course you did. If you want to get in touch with the show tonight, 216-220-0966. Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. That's the way to get in touch with me, should you see fit. First hour guests, again, thanks to Sam Zion, a.k.a. Sam the Cooking Guy, thecookingguy.com, his website to check him out. You can also link over to the Sam Livecast as well. Love that show still, and it's uh, now uh, pre-produced for him. But check it out. Uh, Lainey has emailed in, can I win a free bottle of sauce for my hubby? Yeah. No, no, that's not how it works. You got to win the contest, Laney. Then you can give a free bottle of sauce to your hubby. And you'll both be very happy. I mean, who knows? Who knows what the uses you could use that? I mean, who knows? I have no idea. Sam the Cooking Guy and Rod Gray of uh, Pellet Envy joined us last segment. Still to come on the show, Lee Scott and David Rosen from Uban's Barbecue coming up next segment. Kit Polk from Canned Heat will be joining me at 1035. The 2015 Sam's Club Barbecue Series rolled into Ypsilanti, Michigan this past weekend. This was a local event 
that feeds the Madison Wisconsin Regional Final. The top six teams moving on in particular order. And by the way, a listener pointed out to it, you know, a, a listener pointed out to me, the Great Lakes Barbecue, get it? They're awesome. You're overlooking them. No, I'm not. I'm from the Great Lakes. This show is a product of the Great Lakes, for crying out loud. Uh, coming in first, IBQing at the Barbecue Superstore with a 677. Reserve Grand Champion Big Brothers Barbecue. Yeah. Third place, Smoking Aces at the Barbecue Superstore.com. Fourth place, Mac Attack Barbecue. Fifth place, The Smoke Hunters. And rounding out the top six, Sweet Tea's Barbecue Shack. So congratulations to all those. Moving on to Madison, Wisconsin. The points discrepancy from one to six, a pretty large gap, 22 points almost. So a substantial victory for uh, Richard Parker and Mr. Rasmussen over there at the Barbecue Superstore. Uh, two points, roughly, uh, even between uh, Grand and Reserve. Uh, the next Sam's Club event will be in two weeks, or July 11th, as I said earlier in the first hour. Indianapolis, Indiana takes place there. It's a local qualifier feeding the Madison, Wisconsin Regional, as I just said. Look, if you are a team that's going to Indianapolis, you're looking for somewhere to eat, bring the checkbook, honey, because there aren't, places like this across the country make reservations now early and often st elmo's steakhouse winner they should be a sponsor of the ship st elmo blow it all do not go light on anything get the shrimp cocktail world famous there's a section of the restaurant right up in the front part on the street it's all open you can watch the guy make shrimp cocktail that's how popular it is. When NFL football goes to Indianapolis, they set up a camera at St. Elmo's. That's how good it is. It's one of the best independently owned steakhouses in the country. If you're going there, eat there. Then go across the street to Ram Bar and drink until your face falls off. All right. Are you ready for it? I know I'm ready for it. Let's do the weekly barbecue roundup with me. Here we go with this week's edition of the weekly barbecue roundup covering June 26th and 27th, starting out with the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Up first, the Leadville Barbecue and Brew Festival in Leadville, Colorado, winning that one. 303 Barbecue with a 677. Third annual Willard Freedom Fest Barbecue Cookout in Willard, Missouri. Getting that win, getting basted with a 703.4. Then we have smoking hot barbecue Nassau. Nassau Bahamas going a little international. Results not in for that one, unfortunately, at the time of this recording. Then we have the third annual Ribstock NBA Barbecue Festival in Omaha, Nebraska. Winning that one, Grills Gone Wild, Iowa with a 686. Then we have Smoking on the Pecos in Artigia, New Mexico. Winning that one, the American Dream Barbecue Team with a 683. Then we have Hog Wild Barbecue and Chrome Fest in Chandler, Oklahoma. Winning that one, Caveman Cuisine with a 694. Battle of the Bones, Central Point, Oregon, going far out to the Pacific Northwest. Fat Dad's Barbecue taking that one with a 681. Newport Beach Barbecue Contest in Newport Beach, California. Winning that one, ZZYZX Barbecue, 709. Wow. Then the Blount, the Blount, Blount, Blount County Barbecue Bash in Maryville, Tennessee. Winning that one, Smoke on This, with a 706.2 Silicon Valley Barbecue Championship, Santa Clara, California. Winning that one, Bowling Over Pigs, with a 677 and 7. Smoke on the Square, in memory of David Harness in Franklin, Indiana. Winning that one, 1-2 BBQ. With a 694.7, the Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle. Winning that one, Pellet Envy with a 695.5. Grilling in the Grafton, Grafton, Wisconsin. Winning that one, Tim's Full Belly Deli with a 679.4. The Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Winning that one, IBQN at the Superstore, 677 flat. Covington Cork and Pork Festival, Covington, Virginia. Winning that one, Smokeaholics with a 690.8. Then we have the Mr. Barbecue Barbecue Challenge, Davenport, Iowa. 
There's no place like smoke takes it. 694.8. Green Mountain Barbecue Championship. Waterbury, Waterbury, Vermont. Sorry. Can you smell my pits barbecue taking first in there? 690.2. The Delt Beer and Barbecue Fest. And Dieft, the Netherlands. Oh, my. Results not in there, unfortunately, at time of recording. The first annual Green Port Harbor Barbecue Beer and Blues Festival in the Peconic, New York. Winning that R2BQ. R2BQ, right. 665.6 takes that. And finally for FB, uh, I'm sorry, for Kansas City Barbecue Society, Ribs and Rise Barbecue Festival at Dorney Park, Allentown, Pennsylvania, winning that one. Low and slow, BBQ 683.3. Now we move on to Texas. The IBCA saw 10 cookoffs this weekend. Three of those are unknown. We have Texas Barbecue King Tour in Pearland, Texas, winning that one. Paul Carnell, PJ's Cookhouse. Then we have the Big Spring DRA, Big Springs, Texas. Matt Alexander wins that one with Kiss My Rack. Almost hot in hell in Hearden, Texas. Grand champion Glenn Jarrett with She Thinks My Slabs Are Sexy. Lone Star Barbecue uh, Series, or Lone Star Barbecue Series, excuse me. Both unknown, unfortunately. We have Triple Crown Barbecue in Chile in Waco, Texas. Winning that one, Kevin Riley with Circle R Cookers. Then the Riverfest Bandera, Texas, winning that one, Kit Polk, Canned Heat. The Texas Gulf Coast, none known at this time. Also unknown at this time, the Florida Barbecue Association. Such a weekly barbecue roundup. And now we go back to me with more of the Barbecue Central Show. Take it away, me. All right, here I am. Thank you, me. Well, you were you were in fine voice, by the way, me. That was absolutely fantastic. All right, so I want your feedback. I've been doing it here now uh, for about a month or so. You know, when we've had shows. If you like the weekly barbecue roundup, would love to uh, hear you chat it up a little bit here in the chat room or uh, email me and let me know that it's worthwhile. Uh, This is something that I do either uh, late Saturday night or Sunday, try and get the most um, finishes that I can possibly get covering. Now, look, I can only cover what the people in the respective sanctioning bodies are uh, posting, right? So, uh, once again, thanks, huge thanks. You would notice that Texas has taken a huge leap in visibility here on this show. Single-handedly has to do with my guy, pitmaster of Rogue Cookers, Doug Shiding. So if you are happy with the fact that you are now a lot more in the know with Texas stuff before you were last year, it's Doug's uh, single-handedly has stepped up and given me information each and every week, tracking progress, sending me a quick take, and then I'm able to drop it down on the record and uh, combine that. Uh, You know, Florida Barbecue Association kind of misses the ball on the updates. Anybody help me with that? Come on. All right. Uh, Leslie Scott and David Rosen from Ubans. Coming next. Psych. Doug, thank you for telling me about Texas. I didn't know about Texas until I met you. I hear it's a really big state down south somewhere. All right, folks. Let me talk to you quickly about the folks at the Barbecue Guru, longest running sponsor of the show. They have started all the barbecue pitmaster no not the barbecue pitmaster the uh, automatic pit temperature control device stuff that's right not familiar with how these little beauties work i don't get into the minutia but imagine a product that you can set your pit temperature once set it keeps it running at that temperature all the way through the cook you can take advantage of this technology right today or this evening If you're a busy working professional like me, or perhaps you're constantly on the run with kids and you're doing errands and you don't have the time to set around 10 pit temps, I get it. The Guru allows you to throw on a pork, butter, or brisket, a couple slabs of ribs, you're off to do whatever it is that needs to get done. The Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. There are currently four different models to choose from, so you know there is one that will fit your budget. How about the CyberQ Wi-Fi? How about the Party Q? Love the Party Q. $149, $149, runs on AA batteries. It's a self-contained unit. Monitors the internal temperature. No, sorry. It keeps your pit right where you want it. It's the cruise control of pit temperature. Control device. Easiest point of entry. You got to try it out. 149 bucks. You can afford to try it out and not like it, right? 
In the market for a cooker, Onyx Oven, you know about it. I've told it to you for years. Wins on the competition circuit, wins in backyards. You know it's going to accommodate any of the Barbecue Guru potential control devices as well. Head on over to thebbqguru.com. Check out their products. If you have any questions, call them directly, 800-288-GURU. They'll make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. 800-288-GURU or thebbqguru.com, the breakthrough in barbecue technology is the Barbecue Guru. As a matter of fact, uh, Barbecue Bob Trudnack was out in the freaking Netherlands doing a barbecue contest out there and did very well. Congratulations to Bob. We should recap that, Bob. Hit me up. All right, uh, Ubon's Barbecue coming up out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. From the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. This portion of the show being brought to you by the good folks over at CookinPellets.com. hey Your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet-driven cookers. Not going to avoid any warranties. Premium pellets, folks. Premium pellets. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. They just moved into a huge facility. They can have like 750 billion pounds ready to go. Ready to ship at any time. You can also visit Amazon.com to purchase as well. Joining me now, kind of uh, barbecue icons in the world of competition and business and uh, all that good stuff. And here to talk about the life of Ubon's Barbecue, David Rosen, Leslie Scott joining me here on the show. Leslie David, I'm here. thank you for uh, joining me. Is it uh, we got both on the line or just you, Leslie? Uh, right now it's just me. I'm trying to figure out how to merge David in. Uh, how are you? I'm doing absolutely fab. You're the uh, are you the queen of barbecue? No, no, no. Oh. I'm the princess. Who's, I'm the barbecue prince. Who's the queen? How do we get rid of her and we can install you as queen for crying out loud? See, see, here's how I think of it. Go ahead. I think my daddy is the king. Yes. And that makes me the princess. And so maybe someday I'll be the queen, but Uh-oh. the queen has to do a lot more work <laughs> than the princess. So I'm not positive I'm in for that. Sometimes, uh, I mean, just ask that Princess Kate or whatever her name is. I mean, she seems to be yucking it up, right? She's enjoying herself. I would it's say. It's a good time to be a princess. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, all right. So, uh, Leslie, let me... Uh, as if we could kind of uh, dial... I mean, your first timer to the show here, and I appreciate you making the time, of course, tonight. Um, oh, my The history... Of is, am I, and am I saying it right? It's Ubon's barbecue, right? It's actually Ubon's. Ubon's, right? Uh, yeah, my um, my grandfather's name was Ubon Roark, and we um, he's really who started our family barbecue tradition. Um, he's from Southeast Missouri and had a real kind of specific flavor to the stuff that he cooked. And he passed the barbecue traditions down to my dad, and my dad has passed me. And now we're working on my son. He's 11 and has already won a barbecue contest for kids. Wow. And he was helped with the presentation at Memphis in May this year. So, um, yeah, so, so it's, a, it's definitely a family thing for us. You know, when you think back to your youth, I mean, it's great to have such a, a traceable history back into an industry which you guys are doing so well in, that being barbecue. You know, what are like some of the most key memories that you have of your grandfather and then, you know, your dad as it relates to barbecue? Like, what are they teaching you and what are the flavors that you're remembering and, you know, some of that good stuff? With my with my granddad, Yvonne, um, one of the very what? first things I remember is, is standing next to him at his big barbecue pit. It was shaped like a wishing well. And um, I can remember peeking over. He always cooked. Um, he always cooked chicken and sausage, and um, he he said that those were the least expensive things that he could cook and feed 
um, you know, and feed his boys. So, um, so what I learned is that you could take meat that's not expensive and make it taste really good. Um, the flavors that he has are, he, he really worked hard on getting a great combination of sweet and spicy and tangy. And, um, so our, our flavor profile is a little bit Memphis, a little bit North Carolina, it's just from a little bit of everywhere. Um, and so he, he really taught my dad how to, how to use a grill. And, um, in 89, we started cooking competition barbecue and I was, uh, pretty young then. And, um, in 92, I was the first female to win, um, a grand champion on the Memphis and May barbecue circuit. And, um, so I got to share that. I got to sit at the table with my daddy and he and I got to, uh, present a, a great rack of ribs and have been doing it together, you know, ever since. Um, daddy is, daddy is just, he, he has this just inner sort of understanding of smoke and fire. And, um, that's what I'm learning from him is, is the, the timing of things. I'm learning to be instinctual about cooking from my dad. Uh, Leslie, do you find that as you kind of look around competition barbecue scenes, and it doesn't have to be, you know, MBN or KCBS or FBA, I mean, it kind of, uh, you know, to to a large degree, you can homogenate them all, I guess. Do you think that people are trying to be too technical and trying to copy too much of what everybody else is doing uh, to give themselves a better chance of winning versus just trying to, to strike out and, and make their own calling card, if you will? You know, it's really hard to to strike out and do that, especially when um, you know there are there are so many um, there are so many teams that come from other teams, and so everybody's learning tricks from every every single possible spot. For for a while, um, every flavor profile was exactly the same because we had so many people, um, you know, basically going from team to team to team. Um, it's a lot shinier than it used to be. There was a there was a time when you hid your you hid your aluminum foil from the judges. You pretended like you didn't wrap your rib. You know you uh you 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 did all sorts of little cheater things, but you did them the right way. You know we didn't we didn't start off with with a barbecue guru. We didn't start off with an electric grill, you know, I mean, there are, there's a lot of things that we've seen that have changed. And I guess it's a good thing because if you, you know, if you don't change, you're standing still. But at the same time, um, a lot of the old methods are getting lost. Um, you know, I'm excited to see that what we do is continuing to grow and that there are new festivals, new barbecue festivals starting. There are new, um, you know, new contests starting every year. And, you know, just really excited about, about the growth of it. But I have seen things change. I have seen things kind of homogenize. Definitely. Definitely. Leslie Scott. But I don't joined... think that's a bad thing. No, absolutely not. Uh, ubonsbarbecue.net. I'm sorry. ubons.net is the website. If you want to uh, check us out, the letter U B O N S U B O N S dot net. If you want to check us out here while we're talking it up, Leslie Scott joining me here on the show. Uh, Leslie, you mentioned that uh, your son was doing a presentation for Memphis in May this year. So I have to ask you, I mean, that's a, you know, for the folks that don't know Memphis in May, I mean, it's like one of the biggest barbecue competitions, regardless of sanctioning body in its own little standoff competition. Everybody wants to win that one before you hang up the competition cleats. Um, right. How old? How old is this kid? He's 11. 11 He's years? 11. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. I mean... I would be <laughs> pooping myself, uh, and I'm for, I'm a 40-year-old man who's talked a lot of barbecue, <laughs> let alone 11-year-old. I mean, this kid had to be feeling really confident to get out there and sell U-bonds to the judges, right? It, it goes beyond confidence. It's what he knows. You know, it's his, it's his truth. He, um, he went to his first barbecue contest before he was six weeks old, and, um, you know, he's, he, he and my dad are super, super close. And I got to watch my dad talk Jacob through 
the the shoulder prep. This is why we leave the this is why we leave the skin on the shank. This is why we remove this fat. This is why we cut into this particular muscle. I, I watched my dad teach my son how to do that. And then, uh, of course, J- Jacob wasn't at the table by himself. His, he was there with his poppy, so he had some really good backup. But it's 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 his right, it's his birthright, you know. And uh, so he he's been an ambassador for barbecue since he was a little bitty fella, little bitty fella. So this was just a natural progression, and I, I tell you, it made me so so proud because it means that what we're doing that's another generation that's ready to keep doing it. So that's, that's exciting for me. Leslie, when you look at, you know, where you're from in a, in a regional sense versus some of the other barbecue meccas, do you think that, you know, where you're at, it's, it's really more ingrained into the fabric of the fa- of the family, the barbecue and passing on, you know, one generation to the next, to the next. So, so, you know, what your grand, what your granddad was doing isn't lost between now your dad and you and son who will hopefully eventually pass it along to uh, his offspring right right it's it's unbelievable it's it's in, in the mississippi delta um which is where we live we live in, in yazoo city mississippi where um my house is on the last hill before you get to the mississippi rivers and it's so it's flat from here you know 50 60 miles over wow. the river and um in the in the mississippi delta it's a, it's a poor area, but it's a very, very strong family er- area. And for us, family goes beyond your mama and your daddy and your aunt and your uncle. You know, family is anybody who shares the table with us. And I think that's true all over the Mississippi Delta. It's um, fire and and barbecue are the great unifiers, you know. Um, my My daddy recently said that, Barbecue is the front porch of America. And I thought that was a great quote yep. because it really sums up what we do. Everywhere we go, we may be, um, you know, we may be at a contest with 10 teams. We may be somewhere like Memphis with 300, but it's still like having a drink on your front porch. You know, you're, you're surrounded by your family, your friends, and um, I don't know. I've never gone and not had a good time. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great quote by your father for sure. really sums it up nice. Uh, Leslie, at some point, you know, you're perfecting stuff in the backyard. And, I mean, I hear it from my friends and neighbors because, I mean, what do they care? They would have no stake in it. But, they're, oh, you should open a restaurant. Blah, blah. I mean, Ubons has actually done that as well. You have a restaurant. Uh, when did you get? In, when did you guys get into the restaurant business? Well, my, my daddy worked for um, Mississippi Chemical starting in 1973 until, um, until 2001. Uh, I'm sorry, 2003. And um, he was part of the workforce reduction. And so he found himself at, you know, early 50s without a job and trying to figure out what he wanted to do. And we all decided that that was the the perfect time to open a restaurant. And I tell you, um, just because you cook doesn't mean you can run a restaurant. Right. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's it's a lot like a marriage. It really is. Um, it's it's a lot of work, and people aren't exactly used to great barbecue everywhere they go. You know, lots of people, lots of barbecue places have. Uh, I like to call it sloppy Joe barbecue, where it's all meat, <laughs> all sauce, and a little bit of meat, yeah. and so people don't have you know the super high expectations. So you're not always completely appreciated for what you can do. Um, but I have to say that, that as we've done it longer, we've gotten better at, at what we do at the restaurant. And, you know, we got, we got a lot of fans. So it's, it's, it's exciting. I, I would, um, I really enjoy the catering business. And um, I would, I would do all catering if I could. But um, I, the restaurant's a whole different world. It's it's a very it's a very different style of commitment. You don't get to just love barbecue. You have to do a whole lot of other stuff. That's not nearly as much fun. Got to make money, right? That's right. You got to <laughs> figure out how to make it work. That's sometimes the toughest thing to figure out. Um, <laughs> Leslie, one of the things that I have, and and I've tracked U bonds for you know years and years, and one of the things that I find 
most fascinating is not only does the name come up with, you know, some of the historical barbecue greats and that you take part in some of the best competitions during the course of the year and you finish well, and you do like a, a big apple block party or, you know, some of these other type of functions, but inevitably what I see coming up with you bonds is this bloody Mary mix. That's like the best thing on the face of the earth. Where did this come from? It, it, really, it really is great. Um, we have, and you cook barbecue competition, you know that most teams have some sort of a signature drink or a signature sort of ritual, and ours has always been Bloody Mary. Um, everybody knows that if they need a Bloody Mary, we're the place to come to, and it's been that way for many, many years. <laughs> and um, so my partner, uh, we, we met, Daddy and I met our partners, David and Adam, um, about eight or nine years ago in, in New York City. And we went into business together to sell our barbecue sauce. And what we found out really quickly was that there are lots and lots of barbecue sauces on the barbecue <laughs> sauce market. Yeah. And um, we've always used our barbecue sauce as a flavoring for our Bloody Mary mix. And so a good friend of ours uh, said, why are you not selling Bloody Mary mix instead of sauce? And so... We started looking into it, and um, my, my husband is, uh, he's a doctor, but he was also a chemistry major in, in college, and so we put him to work, and he came up with uh, an industrial recipe for us that is pretty close to the one that I'd fix you if I was fixing from absolute raw ingredients at my house. It's uh, The Bloody Mary mix is, we focused on really natural flavors it's a it's a thick mix because we didn't want to water it down with uh you know it's just stuff that didn't need to be there it's a chunky mix it's got garlic and onions and celery seed and so so it's everything you need except maybe a little horseradish and it's 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 been an exciting transition because we're we're having lots of uh lots of cool places that are starting to use our bloody mary mix in their in their hotels and their restaurants and their resorts. And so, so it's, it's a, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting move in the barbecue world, but it's been an exciting one for it. All right. So here's the loaded question. Unfortunately, Leslie, I, uh, I have tried and tried. I hate bloody Mary. I don't know why. I mean, like I, I, I'm trying to figure out what what do I want to like more. I want to, but I think in the end, I really, really want to like Bloody Marys, but I can't do it. So maybe your mix is what puts me over the hump, right? I, I, I really think it will be. It will be the thing that changes because what what we made sure that we wanted to capture is the barbecue flavor. And when I say that, I mean the tomato, the vinegar, the um, molasses, the sugar, the brown sugar, all those different flavors that you catch. Um, we, we wanted to make sure that you catch those. And so there are lots of familiar flavors there. But we also have always added pickle juice to our oh. Bloody Mary mix. So there's a strong element of the vinegar and the dill, all the garlic, all the things that make a really good pickle. So um, so I think that that combination, barbecue and pickles, is what would make the difference for you. I think you just haven't had a good Bloody Mary yet. Well, there's a very good chance of that, uh, although my dad's flipping out right now going, no, that's not true. He loves uh, he loves horseradish, by the way, and his uh, Bloody Marys. Um, so, all right, so and you can get the Bloody Mary mix at uh, ubons.net, correct? Exactly. And we're right. actually going to run, um, we're actually going to run a sale um, this um uh, in honor of, of me and talk. Oh. So anybody that orders mail and mentions your show, we've got a, um, we've got a special discount. So please, by all means hit you bonds.net. All right. You bonds.net and mention uh, barbecue central and you get a, uh, yeah. a nice little discount there. We appreciate that. Exactly. Leslie. Central yeah. lights always looking for uh, a discount because inherently they're cheap bastards, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> let me uh, see if my homework is correct. Are you going to be on chopped? I am. How about that? I, oh, my goodness gracious. It's crazy. Um, I'm going to be on July 28th on the Food Network on top. Um, it was such a cool experience. I, I Just a little redneck girl from a small town and got to do that. <laughs> it's just been, man, barbecue has given me so many great opportunities. 
So were, many great opportunities. Were you approached, or is this something that you were kind of casted out on and you had to, you know, kind of apply and, and make a sell for yourself? Well, they did um, They did a Grillmaster tournament about four years ago, and I applied for that one. And um, when I got done with my interview, I, I was relieved because I knew that I was not going to be on the show <laughs> because I wasn't ready. <laughs> I, I was I shook during the interview, and I thought, oh my gosh, what would I do in front of cameras? And so I I gave it I gave it some time, and I have a friend who is a friend of one of the casting directors, and she and I bumped into each other, and I managed to talk my way into an interview, and uh, then somehow they ended up picking me to be on the show. It was the greatest thing, and they're actually doing some casting right now. Or another grill tournament. So if um, if there are people out there who are interested, there are applications online, um, and and they're looking for interesting personalities and interesting people who are comfortable around a fire. So this is a this is a great time to check into check into chops for the future. Uh, Leslie, where is Ubon's going to be competing at next? Well, let's see. Our next trip is we are headed up to Chicago for the oh Windy my. City Smokeout for the festival there. And then um, our next competition will be our home competition. And we won't be competing. We'll be hosting. It's here in Yazoo City, Mississippi. And it's going to be the weekend of September 11th. Um, it's called Fire and Feast. And our prize money is just over $21,000. Wow. So in the, in the barbecue world, that's a, that's a, yep. it's a big purse. We, it it's a big purse. So that's our, that's our next contest. We'll also be part of, um, Q in the Lou in, um, in St. Louis in September, September 25th. And, uh, then we will be on to our, the very first barbecue contest we ever cooked. This will be our 26th year, 20, 25th or 26th year to cook at Cleveland Oktoberfest in Cleveland, Mississippi. Not Cleveland, Ohio? Not Cleveland, Wait, Mississippi. I thought I've missed this barbecue contest for all these years. I was going to freak <laughs> out. My no, goodness. No, no. But, you, but you, didn't, you don't need to miss the one here in Yazoo. That's right. Uh, Leslie, let me ask you a quick question here because I'm getting some feedback in the instant chat. People wanting to know, is there is there like any kind of coupon code or anything for uh, ordering the the uh, Bloody Mary mix or you just put in Barbecue Central uh, at some just, point in checkout? Yeah, just put, just put Barbecue Central in at checkout under comment. All right, very good. Uh, we're talking with Leslie Scott, Ubon's Barbecue. The website, ubons.net, that's U-B-O-N-S. Dot net. If you're going to try that Bloody Mary mix, drop in Barbecue Central in the comments code as you check out. Get a nice little discount there. Leslie, really appreciate the time tonight. Thanks so much. Let's do it again soon. Man, it's my pleasure. Anytime you let me know. I sure will. There she is. <laughs> Leslie Scott of Ubon's Barbecue. I mean, she couldn't be uh, any more of a southern peach, right? Absolutely. I got. She gets two. So you're wondering, oh, why weren't you a dick and ask about the Confederate flag to somebody in Mississippi, right? No, I'm not going to do that. Why am I going to do that? It's a barbecue show, man. It's a barbecue show. What do I care? Let me really piss the Southern people off. What do I care? We won the war. All right, folks, public service announcement to my man, Stephen DeFranco, and uh, this will be the last... Stephen DeFranco read for a good while. So thanks to Steve for sponsoring the show for like years and years and years. Uh, if you have a need for a watch, for earrings, for a ring, maybe you want to sell some stuff, whatever, you go ahead and make sure that you give my man Stephen DeFranco a look. The website, stephendefranco.com. That's Stephen DeFranco, D-I-F-R-A-N-C-O. And look at the inventory, the watches, the bowls, the Rebecca stuff, the Pandora-compatible style bracelets, all that good stuff. Then call them, 440-943-2700, 440-943-2700. And say, hey, Steve, this is what I found. What can you do? He's going to ask you a bunch of questions. He's going to make sure that he is making sure you are buying the right thing, spending the right amount of money. That's 
to your liking, not his. I mean, you know, he doesn't do this. I mean, he cares, but you can't spend too much with Steve. I don't know. You can't spend too much with me, for crying out loud. He's going to make sure that you got exactly what you want. Todd, I'll work on that promo code, by the way. I'll give you Leslie's uh, email address. You can check it out. Stand by. So here's what you do. You visit stephendefranco.com. You pick out what you like. You call him, 440-943-2700. When he answers the phone, you tell him you're a barbecue brother or sister. He'll give you the real discounted prices. And as always, everything ships to you for free. I forget exactly how long Steve has been a sponsor of the show, but it might be going over three years for crying out loud. It's crazy. Good guy, buddies. Nothing terrible has happened. You people weren't buying enough. Telling me nobody could buy a watch? Come on. Everybody owes me $200 payable by PayPal. Greg at thebbcentralshow.com. Give me 200 bucks. Make it up. All right. Uh, we're back with Kit Polk from Canned Heat right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. Who would have thought this music thing was going to go this far? I never asked for this. All right, welcome back. This is the Barbecue Central Show. Thanks again to Leslie, Scott, you bonds. Do I have this number up already? Yeah, all right. We're going to run it. Let me make sure, uh, by the way, if you have, if you're trying to buy the uh, Bloody Mary mix, Todd, I, I need a review from you once you get it. I'm very apprehensive about Bloody Mary Mix. Maybe my next guest is not apprehensive about Bloody Mary Mix. He is a grand champion two weeks in a row, a first-timer this show, and a pitmaster of canned heat. Kit Polk joining me here on the show. Kit, how are you, buddy? Oh, fine. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Kit. I'm uh, doing a little computer stuff here because I forgot to... I didn't forget. I mean, I downloaded your picture, but uh, I forgot to put it in my thing here so we can, everybody can see what you look like as we uh, talk here on the show tonight. So uh, you are, I, I'm wondering, as I you know look back, we were going to have you on the show uh, last week, and then I had the, a little bit of, a, of an issue where I couldn't have the show. And we were able to, you were so gracious to come back on the show tonight. And what I found is this. Potentially, we might have the first guest, and I don't know how big of a fan of you uh, are of the show, but we have this thing called Show Karma, where we we would talk on a Tuesday. You, Kit, would go compete on the following Saturday or Sunday, and because you came on the show, Good Karma follows you, and you always win. I mean, it never doesn't happen. It always happens. So, you know, if you're going to compete next weekend, you're going to be three weeks in a row. But you were scheduled to be on the show last week. I dumped it because I'm an ass. And then you went out and competed. And even though you were going to be on the show, you still won. I can't believe you might be the first by proxy karma grand champion. Can you believe it? That, that's very nice. That's uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, I expect 10% of the winnings as all uh, as all karma recipients get, of course. It goes without yeah. saying. All right, so, uh, Kit, if you could, uh, I guess before we get into the uh, Riverfest competition that took place in Bandera, Texas last week, or uh, this past weekend, uh, maybe a little background about yourself and, you know, a background with barbecue, and then I guess when you decided to jump into the competition scene. Well, I've been cooking about seven years with LSBS and IBCA, which is another group here, this, and uh, the the other folks, but uh, let's see, I've been cooking with them about four years, and I got a little training here and there from good friends, Danny Pat and Monty Brown, and several other good folks, Doug Shielding, and, but we've got a lot of good teams down here, and you, you get out and mix with them, you got to be cooking at a pretty good level, and I uh, started cooking the comps just because uh I had a lot of background with it after seeing that uh, I could do it. So anyway, that's about the gist of it. Uh, Doug, I'm sorry, Kit Polk joining me here on the show. You said Doug and I got sidetracked. Um, what kind of a cooker are you using, Kit? 
I use a, a Danny Patton uh, one man pits, and it's an offset smoker with a chicken smoker on there. What's a chicken smoker specifically? Uh, it's a, a straight up vault with uh, shelves in it that you can adjust or what have you. As far as uh, competitions are concerned, the Texas one's a little bit different than you know some of the other sanctioning bodies. Uh, typically, you go uh, three meat, you go brisket, you go ribs. I'm um, sorry, yeah, you go brisket, ribs, and uh, and half chickens. Uh, do you have you ever gotten into you know any of the other sanctioning bodies where you throw in uh, pork shoulder as well? Hello, Kit. Hello. Hello, sir. He's going to bump back on here in a second, I swear. Kit, you there? Nah, he's not. Get that big stuff out of here. He's like, D- dude, this uh, this interview blows. Oh. I'm out. I got to go prep for my next competition for crying out loud. Oh, oh God, I hate when that happens. Um, yeah, I'm here. Hey, Kit, how are you? All right, Skype must have had an issue. I apologize. Um, have you uh, have you competed in other sanctioning bodies aside from the Texas stuff? Uh, no, I'm strictly down here in Texas, and we cook good Texas barbecue, and it's come out pretty strong in the last year. I've I got I think six uh, uh, GCs and three RGCs, so I've been cooking along. Just trying to stay with these guys they're all good well one more gc uh, unless i'm mistaken gets you auto into the jack daniels is that something that you are uh, either aiming for intently or you're good with it if it does happen uh, i'd be great with it if it happened that'd, that'd be a, a good thing i'm humbled by the whole the whole thing but these are uh, some of them are smaller cook-offs with this the group with lone star and because they do small charities and and fundraisers, you know, for uh, fire departments and et cetera. So we, uh, but uh, the larger ones, yes, they they count towards that, and I'd I'd sure try to go. Would you like to see as uh, I mean, there's a number of different sanctioning bodies or or factions within Texas. Would you like to see like a a big unified thing or? Are you good with the fact that you you know you go to Lone Star one weekend and and go to International Barbecue Cookers another weekend? Well, I would like to see it, but uh, there's a a lot of folks. It's there's just a lot of spread out things around here that that I guess you need other bodies, and that's how they formed because people are picking up those those different areas and. Uh, like I say, there's a lot of local cooks down here, and they're all very good at this stuff. And you got to be on your toes when you when you go out to them. But it sure would be nice to have some continuity w- within the whole thing. Kid Polk joining me here on the show, Pitmaster Canned Heat. Uh, Kid, where do you come up with canned heat? Is that isn't that like a rock group? Well, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I spell it with a K for a reason. There, all you right. Know? Let's uh, hear it because it's Kit. But regardless, uh, I got up and almost did a walk of shame, which a lot of folks have, because they said K-N-H, and that was my old name. And uh, I immediately sat down, because I think that was Ken and Harry. They got the awards that day, which was fine with me. But I uh, immediately went to a list. There's one on the Internet that had just hundreds of barbecue teams, and there wasn't anything that said canned heat and so i went ahead and picked that out and about a week later i'm down at the beach and a fellow my friend of mine he said what's your team name i said canned heat and there's a fella he decided to drink lots of tequilas (laughs) and he sat on a hut and i said you know that's canned heat right there and he (laughs) he was bad to sit on it a lot longer than anyone else and no one took him up on it <laughs> but true <three> story. <laughs> See, with well, that tequila will uh, get you doing crazy stuff, right? <laughs> I, I guess so. He's a man. Uh, yeah, he's, he's something. Of mine. Wow. He's, <laughs> he's got a case of the red. 
Absolutely. Uh, uh, literally. Um, all right, Kit. So if we look back at this past weekend, you're down at the uh, Riverfest Bandera, Texas. Uh, again, as I stated a little bit ago, this is your second uh, grand championship in as many weeks. But I guess, you know, it's a little different from this particular contest than the norm is. This was a four category contest. It wasn't a normal uh, three contest or a three category contest. Yes, sir. What yeah, uh, What were they throwing the, in there? Go ahead. What were they throwing in there this time? Uh, pulled pork, oh. uh, you know, ribs, chicken, brisket, and beans. And how do you, I mean, are you pretty confident in your, you know, your pork shoulder type cook? Yes, sir. I, I did pretty good with that, but I spiked it up quite a bit and used, uh, uh, about a two-fold injection and lots of goodies on the top, and it sure came out good. It was one of the tastier ones I've ever cooked, so it got first place. I don't want to ask you for specifics if you're not willing to give it out, but, I mean, what kind of, a, I guess in general, what kind of a, of a pork flavor profile do you see down in Texas? Like, what do you think the judges like? Well, pork to me is kind of bland so you got to add a little bit more to the inside of it of course but you got to bring it out in a in a bouquet of good uh i guess uh sweet hot and uh but be able to to hold that that full flavor into it uh, with the pork flavoring of course which is there's there's lots of different ones out there and i've played with a whole bunch of them but uh, the latest was nice. Yeah, obviously, as uh, you take Grand Championship. Uh, the other three categories uh, you felt pretty good at as you're turning them in? Oh, yes, sir. you you got to turn in your best. Uh, every time you, you do the cuts, I'll, I'll run two different briskets, and one of them will always stand out in flavor, longevity of uh, profile, and that sort of thing, you, and you're looking for moisture and a, a good snap on your on your cuts, and, and it better hold the moisture or you're out. So uh, it's pretty simple down here. If if you can't cook a real good product, there's always someone else that's going to st- stick up, and especially the local guys, they they stand out in in their profile areas. Uh, Kit, I mean, in, in a lot of different areas of the country, you're finding uh, a pilgrimage almost to these Snake River Farms or these Wagyu style briskets. Is that something that you uh, subscribe to, or are you, you know, still more of a, a quote unquote big box store shopper? I'm big box, but I, I run some other ones, I, you know, Creek Stones and things like that when I can get a hold of good ones. But uh, I haven't cooked the Wagyu's. Um, no, I haven't cooked them yet. Some of my friends are running them, and great products. The uh, different uh, methods on your cook, so you gotta you gotta stick with what you know best, and cross your fingers about sixty percent of it. You know, is is all your profiles and getting things uh, good and tender and good and smoked. You know, having the right woods for the area you're in, and they're off. You cross your fingers the rest of the part, hoping for the judges. Do you think that because it's kind of a, a people's choice palette on the judging that, uh, you know, there isn't an expectation set where there is a specific kind of brisket to be used by a lot of these people? No, sir. It's going to be the best flavor overall. And a lot of times I like I was fifth place brisket last weekend. It might be a smokier uh I'd say more localized type flavor profile that that pulls in front, but I, I'm just glad to and humbled to be able to walk forth and and get my placings in each event. And I've been strong all well for about a year now. Uh, Kit, where are you going to be competing at next? I'm going down to Shiner, Texas, where the Shiner Brewery is. Uh, that's a, a beer here in Texas. It's pretty well known and i guess nationwide now 
but they'll have about a hundred teams down there and some of the best around to be right there. So come on down and eat some. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'll get on my private plane and uh, be down there for the weekend. Uh, I, I mean, figured that you, uh, I mean, g- given the fact you strung two in a row, I mean, you're feeling pretty confident you can be able to get down there and I'm not going to say, you know, win again, but, uh, put out a strong performance. I try to put out a strong one every time and, and through the practice I've done for about three years now, I trend into whatever area I'm in and I'll change up, uh, on rubs and things like that. And, Hopefully, I'll pull through with with a good showing. Normally, it, if the meat's good, something's going to happen. So you, you hope for the best with this business. Yeah, that's uh, that's the key line of this evening. If the meat's good, something's going to happen. Uh, can, yeah. Last question here before I let you go, um, and I appreciate the time tonight. Uh, would you stand or have you stood in line for four or five or six hours for Aaron Franklin's brisket? Uh, no, but I know Aaron, and he's a he's a darn good cook and a good man. But I can't stand in line very long because I'll taste some of mine, and I, I'm like <laughs> one of the fellas I was on earlier. That I, I eat a little chicken, but taste the brisket. That's about it. I, I'd rather a, a good cold beer. I hear. That. I can't imagine standing in line for that. I'm gonna. I'm with you. You cook up a brisket, we'll have beer, and we'll eat your brisket, and I'll be happy, and and perhaps you'll be happy as well. Well, he's got a fine one, and he's done a great business, and and it's uh, commendable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, he's doing something right out there. He wouldn't be the best barbecue in the country. Uh, we're talking with Kit Polk, a man. Uh, canned heat pit master, and uh, he'll be down in Shiner, Texas, this coming weekend. The Shiner Brewery with other hundred teams. So if you're going to be down that area, uh, check it happening. A kid, appreciate the time tonight. Uh, like getting to know you a little bit, and uh, hopefully we can do it again soon. Okay, thank you very much for having me on. You got it. That's my pleasure. There he is, Kit Polk of Canned Heat. I just like saying canned heat. He Look, am I crazy, or did he just say that one of his good buddies was betting people that he would sit on a hot smoker like Case of the Red Ass for real? What? Wow. Nuts bars. Nuts bars. Doug, who is that guy he's talking about sitting on a, a hot metal? Wow. Uh, Doug, you're right. Uh, rule number one. Oh, wait, hold on. We'll come back with the rules of the show. The new rules of the show coming up after I talk to you about Big Papa Smokers. Uh, the one stop online shop for anyone interested in barbecue, the number one Mac pellet grill dealer in the world. Big Papa Smokers features a wide selection of American made grill smokers, such as the Old Hickory Ace BP, the Gateway Drum Smoker, even a drum kit that gives you everything you need to make a world class smoke of a 55 gallon drum. Big Papa Smokers has also made a name for itself in recent years by crafting an award-winning line of championship rubs. From flavors like Sweet Money to Happy Ending, their rubs have had a hand in winning almost every major barbecue competition, including the 12 and 13 American Royal, the 12 and 14 Jack Daniels, the 13 Kings for Challenge, the 14 Houston Livestock and Rodeo, and the 14 Ting of the Smokers. Don't think BPS can just be pigeonholed in a competitive barbecue either. BPS has become so well-known. They've been picked up by a nationwide restaurant chain, BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, with four of the nine BPS rubs featured on the permanent menu and amid glowing reviews. BPS rubs are proven to be a great addition to anyone's pantry. They're in mine. Big Papa has also banded together with fellow California-based rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. You know about it. Defying conventional wisdom. These two California-based rub makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profile that competitive cooks from across the country have begun to aim for. Their website also features an online meat locker with top-quality meats from Snake River Farms shipped right to your door. From the American Kobe beef, the caribou to pork, the double R ranch meats, Big Papa's Meat Locker has something for every type of barbecue aficionado and committed to bringing you the best barbecue flavors on the market. Big Papa's also recently added... Swamp Boys sauce, a fine swine sauce. Granny's barbecue sauce. These are the new kids on the block, so check them out this barbecue season. Big Papa also created a unique brand ambassador program called the BPS Elite Team, featuring 15 of the best competition teams in the country, working together to promote camaraderie, competition barbecue, and benefit children's charities across the U.S. Keep in mind, 
The Big Papa Smokers has been able to do all this with only five years being in the business, turning competition barbecue world on its head, providing customers with the very best barbecue products, becoming a staple of a nationwide restaurant chain, and benefiting children's charities across the U.S. It's just the beginning for Big Papa Smokers. Just the beginning. BigPapaSmokers.com. BigPapaSmokers.com. Check them out. We're going to recap the rules of the show here shortly. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, we're back. Thanks again to Kit Holt from Canned Heat. All right, let's quickly review the rules of the show. There are three standing rules currently. Rule number one, don't get hooked. No, that's not rule number one. I get mixed up. Rule number one, no names, please. Rule number two of the show, don't get hooked. Rule number three of the show. If it's free, it's me. Yes. And now, potentially, rule number four of the show. If the meat's good, something good is about to happen. That's right. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up right here. All the way back in the first hour, we talked with Sam Zion, Sam the Cooking Guy. We also talked with Rod Gray of Pellet Envy. In the second hour, we talked with Leslie Scott of Ubon's Barbecue. Ubon's.net put in Barbecue Central at checkout for a discount on the Bloody Mary mix. And then we talked with Kit Polk of Canned Heat. If you want to check out the replays of the show, hit the website September 11, 2001. I will never forget. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's your program host, proud U.S. American Greg Rempe. Good night now.